Here we go. Hey, good evening. How are you? Hope everything is going well. It is uh, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Oh no, it's Wednesday, eleven twenty p.m. Eleven twenty. Special, special, right? Just like three sixteen. Special. Eleven twenty. Special. Four thirteen. Special. Right? Now eleven twenty. November twentieth. That's my birthday. Cool. Hope you're doing well. That you got an opportunity to uh, serve people, to love on, <laughs> love on each other, love somebody. Uh, yeah, provide a service for them that they usually don't receive. An exceptional service that you stand out wherever you're at because you're gifted and anointed just right where you're at and planted. Cats. Cats and a wild dog down below. But cool. Alright? Yeah, you tell them, Stormy. Stormy's the boss. <laughs> Cool. So this will be a reading from Joel Osteen's book, The Power of Favor. It is titled, Speak the Blessing. Uh, yeah, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. All right. I will always remind you, reiterate, to tell him that you love him too and that you're thankful for him. All right. Because he'll keep staying. And try to, if somebody ever says I love you to them, try to say it back to them. All right. It's rude in American culture. If somebody says I love you and you don't say it back, it's very rude. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not rude. It's just, uh, it says something. It says that might be a hurt or broken person right there. And they're not used to the whole love thing. Even though they, they uh, understand the love of Christ, the love of God, and what, uh, what Jesus did on the cross out of love, uh, because God loved us so much, loved the world so much, uh, you know, they understand that, comprehend that, and uh, uh, the width and the depth and the height of God's love for us. Uh, yeah, they still might have a love problem. There's a little crack in their love tank somewhere, and it needs to be filled up with a cross-shaped hole. But they might have that too, so uh, to break that down, it's going to be people just really loving up on them. Sometimes we're intimidated by people because they're, they seem very powerful or authoritative or strong or courageous and they're Christians and we love them. But sometimes that might intimidate and hold us back from saying things that we got to say because uh, we don't know how it's going to make them feel. The enemy will tell us not to say anything to them, but if we do, do the opposite of what the enemy thinks, and it's going to break down some stronghold. Something big is going to happen, just to, like scales falling off or a heart softening or breaking down barriers. It's pretty amazing. So uh, doing <laughs> the unordinary to make the extraordinary, right? So cool, something like that. Cool. we go with Joel Lucy. See what Joel says. The power of favor, speak the blessing. In Numbers 22, I love 22. I almost started that uh, saying goodbye to everybody. The Israelites were camped on the plains of Moab, headed towards Jericho. When the king of the Moabites saw how many Israelites there were, he was afraid. There was a prophet named Balaam who lived in a nearby city. The king knew that the Lord always did what Balaam asked. So he sent some of his men with a large amount of money to offer Balaam as a payment for him to come and curse the people of Israel. Balaam said, I'll pray about it, but I can only say what God tells me to say. When he prayed, God said, You are not to go with them, for what I have blessed you cannot curse. Notice that when God puts the commanded blessing on you, it doesn't matter what somebody says, doesn't matter what they do or how they treat you. All that matters is that God put his blessing on you and everything else is of no effect. They can say it, but if you don't allow it to take root, it's not going to stop you. It may be unfair, it may seem as though it's getting the best of you, but if you stay in faith, the blessing will always override the curse. They meant it to stop you. God will use it to promote you. The king's representatives went back and told the king that Balaam wouldn't come. The king said, send more distinguished officials, take more money, go back and tell him he has to come and curse the Israelites. They went back, but Balaam said, even if the king gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I am powerless to do anything against the will of my God. They spent the night there, and during the night, the Lord told Balaam to go with them but to do only what he told him. When he arrived, the king said, Balaam, 
What took you so long? You should have come immediately. I need you to curse these people. But Lamb said, I'll pray again, but I can only say what the Lord tells me to say. After making an elaborate sacrifice, Balaam met with the Lord, who gave him this word for the king. This is what the Lord says. The Israelites will succeed and become a great nation. They will have descendants too numerous to count. The king said, Balaam, stop. What have you done to me? I brought you here to curse them, but instead you're blessing them. Balaam said it again. I cannot curse what God has already blessed. If Balaam were here today, he would say the same thing to you. You cannot be cursed. There is a commanded blessing on your life. When you go through disappointments, unfair things happen. It's easy to feel that's clouded your future. Have a new perspective. What God has blessed, nothing can curse. When you understand you have this commanded blessing, you won't be upset because someone's talking about you. You won't be worried about your finances or discouraged because of a setback. You know every force that is trying to stop you is powerless to change the blessing God put on your life. I love how when Balaam was supposed to curse the Israelites and they were going to pay him a lot of money, not only did he refuse to do it, but God had him start speaking blessing over his people. He started telling how the Israelites were going to succeed and go further and accomplish great things. This is a spiritual principle that God was showing us. When the enemy tells you all the reasons why you're not going to get well, not get out of debt, not overcome the challenge, instead of agreeing with him, do as Balaam did and start speaking victory. Speak health, speak favor, speak abundance. The enemy wants you to curse your future with negative words and negative thoughts. He knows he can't stop you. But if you can convince but if he can convince you to go around discouraged, thinking you've reached your limits, that will keep you from your destiny. You have to turn it around. Tell the enemy, you want me to curse my future? I know better. I'm going to bless my future. Well, you'll never get out of debt and you'll always struggle. No thanks. You have the wrong person. I will lend and not borrow. Whatever I touch will prosper and succeed. I've been commanded to be blessed. When he whispers, you saw the medical report, you're never going to get well. Come on, agree with me. Curse your future. Turn it around. Do the opposite of what the devil says. Turn it around and declare God is restoring help be back to me. The number of my days he will fulfill. Well, the more you pray, the worse your child gets. No thanks. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The seed of the righteous, my seed, will be mighty in the land. You may have a lot coming against you. Every voice says it's not going to work out. I'm asking you to be a Balaam and speak the blessing and not the curse. Speak the blessing. Declare the blessing. We already know all the promises. We already know what God has written in the book. It's good to read the Bible and find out just to give you uh, assurance and faith in what the Word of God says. It says it right there. And God cannot lie. And everything God created is good. <laughs> Crazy. He created you. He is a wrathful God. He does not like people messing with his children. Do not mess with my children or my people. Don't do it. All right? Cool. That's loyalty. That's a good, good father. You have favor with God. The power of favor. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Now thank him for that. Thank him and pray to him. Pray for more favor, God. Anoint me. Give me favor. Give me knowledge. Give me wisdom. Give me insight. Give me new revelation. New perspective. Transform my mind to see things like you see things. Pretty excellent stuff, huh? Pretty powerful. Hmm. The love of God. Yeah. And to have the, the creator of the whole entire universe as your father, it's pretty cool. And have full access to God now through Jesus Christ. Hmm. There's only one way to the Father, and it's through me, Jesus said. It's pretty excellent. So, so let's do that. If you haven't already, surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You can do it anytime you want. You can do it uh, at a church, in a restaurant, at work, in the privacy of your own home. Uh, yeah, you can just... Uh, Get down and say, God, I surrender. I surrender my life. I believe the gospel story is true. I believe everything about it. I believe you are a Lord. I believe you are the Messiah. Who do you say I am? 
I am the Messiah and I'm surrendering my life to you. So Jesus, come into my heart. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Change my life. I'm going to make you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say something like that, if you surrender something around there, there's a specific prayers, but this isn't on their law. He can feel if you're genuine. He knows if you're genuine about it, if you truly, truly mean it, all right? Then your life will show it, all right? Surrender in your life. And then the next step is get baptized. It's super important to get baptized. To say, hey, world, hey, devil, I'm Jesus is now. I'm God's. I'm in God's kingdom. I'm heirs with God. I'm part of the family. No more messing around, all right? You can't mess with me. I know you still come at me, but I'm equipped now. I am equipped and renewed and alive, all right? Pray. Pray to your Heavenly Father. All right? Be in the Word of God. i got to read the Word of God. All right? At least, or put it on YouTube. There's plenty of Word of God you can just listen to. Listen to if you can't just uh, physically lay there and read something. Uh, you can listen to it. And it's better to read it and speak it out loud. It's very powerful. But if you have the Word of God going in your car and house, that's uh, pretty good too. I would have to say in my humble opinion. <laughs> All right? A little bit is better than nothing, so read a little bit if you can, all right? Because it could just be the word that you need today. Love y'all. See ya. Bye.